Example 59. If a box contains eight identical red poker chips and five identical blue poker chips, what is the probability that two randomly selected poker chips taken from the box without replacement are the same color? All right, when I read this problem, the first thing I want to notice is that it's a probability question, of course, right? I also want to see that there are two randomly selected poker chips. So my initial gut instinct would be to think of multiplication rule. So let's see, if I wrote that out, it would be probability that two chips taken are the same color, right? So I'm just kind of shorthanding this, right? Just so we have something to think about. Two chips are the same color, right? Well, if it's two chips being selected, normally this two is going to be two spaces, right? And in each space, then I'll put a corresponding probability. And if you're going to do that, you need to be able to identify this space and say what it is, right? This would be the first chip that's taken, right? The first chip. What is that chip supposed to turn out to be here? To answer this probability problem, it's going to be what? The first chip is, hmm, I don't know, right? What is that first chip going to be? Does it have to be blue, for example? Or could it be red? I think it could be either, right? Because it doesn't matter really what the first chip is as long as the second chip matches that. Whenever that happens to you, whenever, whenever it doesn't matter how the first one turns out, in most cases, that's not going to work out. That means you're probably going to get the problem wrong. The only time that does work out is maybe if there is symmetry in the box of chips or something. What I mean by that is that there's exactly the same number of red chips as blue chips. Then there's a way to do it that way, but um, it's not going to work here. So we shouldn't have a question mark here. We should know exactly how that's going to turn out. So this means that this is probably a bad approach. We should probably eliminate that as our option. So let's think of it doing it another way then. So what I need you to do then is to try to say this another way. The problem is this word same, it's not clear. What do you mean same color? Well, how does that happen exactly? How would you get two chips that are the same color? Well, I would say the only way we get two chips of the same color is if we reach into the box and we get maybe say two red chips. Or another way we could get two chips of the same color is to get two blue chips, right? So isn't this the probability of getting two red or two blue? Isn't that correct? And if that's correct, then I think we have a way to solve this problem because the word or here means to add. So we could say that this is the probability of two red plus the probability of two blue. And now that's really great actually. If you don't see it yet, let's talk about why. You're taking two chips from the box, right? Well, that's two spaces, right? Multiplied together because they're two separate events, right? Plus, the probability if it was two blues taken, you know, kind of thinking starting over, right? Again, it would be two events, so two spaces of probability. And now I know exactly how to fill in these spaces, right? If I look at that space, I could tell you what that's supposed to be. Hey, that's the first chip selected, right? If you ask me how it's supposed to turn out, well, if I'm supposed to get two reds in this scenario, the first chip is red. So there's no ambiguity. I know exactly how that first thing is supposed to turn out. And what's this second space going to represent? Well, that would be the probability that the second is red, right? Be careful though, given that the first is red. Because it says we're sampling without replacement. In other words, I'm going to put that chip aside. I'm not going to put it back in the box. So if the first chip I took out was red, I'll have less red chips in the box and less total chips. So I'll need to think about that. But still, that's doable. That's very easy. That's just a dependent case, right? And we'll just reduce the fraction accordingly. We know how to handle that. And then, you know, same thing with this guy, right? This is kind of starting over, rethinking the boxes back to pristine. And we'd say, what? Well, this would be the probability that the, if we're supposed to get two blues, the first chip, right, is blue. And then this space is going to be what? Probability that the second is blue given that the first was blue. And so we know how to answer these questions. I can figure that out because, you know, the chance the first chip is red is just what? Number of red chips over the total, right? Total number of chips. This will be the number of red chips left over the total number of chips left in the box. If we look at the box, we can say what? The box is just filled with initially eight red chips and five blue chips, right? And that's the box. That's what it looks like. Eight red chips, five blue chips. Otherwise, they're identical, but the colors are different for the two types of chips. 
All right, so when we come here for this first fraction, what's the probability that we get two reds? Well, it'll be two fractions multiplied. The first fraction will be the first chip selected. We want it to be red, so we're gonna be thinking the number of red chips over the total. How many red chips are there over total? Well, there are eight red chips. There are a total of 13 chips, right? And we look at the second fraction, we'll say, what's the probability that the second one is red? Well, remember, if I imagine that the first one was red, I put that aside, there's only gonna be seven red chips left when I go back into the box. And total, there's only gonna be 12 chips, right? So remember, we're talking about the probability before we go into the box, right? Before the first selection, there are eight chips that are red out of 13 total chips. We take a chip out, we put it aside. Now, before I go in for my second selection, there are seven reds left. 12 total chips rep, this is the probability that both turn out to be red. But it could also be that I get the same color by both turning out to be blue. So let's start over, a fresh box, pristine again. What's the probability the first chip I select is blue under that scenario? Well, there are five blue chips out of, again, 13 total chips. What's the chance the next chip I take is blue? Well, if I took one blue chip and put it aside, there'll only be four blue chips left out of 12 total chips left in the box, right? Because remember, the first chip has been taken out, and that first chip was blue, so there's only four blues out of 12 total results. All right, and then we can just clean this up a little bit, you know, get the numerical answer here. So eight times seven, of course, is 56, right? And five times four, of course, is 20. And then we have uh, 13 times 12. Well, 12 times 12 is 144. If you add another 12 to that, you get 156. So that's 156. So 13 times 12 should be 156. And then let's work that out in our calculator to see what we get here, right? So we'll have 56 plus 20, or 76 over 156. 76 divided by 156, and you get the answer 0 .487, 0 .487. So the overall answer to this question is approximately 0.487 or 48.7 percent of the time. Um, just so that uh, you're comfortable using your calculator, some of you are not good with fractions, so you may not understand how I got this fraction to turn out this way. If you wanted to actually work this out in your calculator straight out and get the same answer, you don't have to do much here to do that. You just do 8 divided by 13 times 7 divided by 12, right? So I'm just doing it exactly as I see it, right? Plus 5 divided by 13 times 4 divided by 12. If you do that, you get the exact same answer, 0.487. So if you're not comfortable simplifying fractions in your head, then don't worry about it. Just type it all in your calculator, hit enter, you get the same exact solution. And that's all she wrote.